Well, hello again, guys. <laughs> Since I couldn't leave well enough alone, I, uh, this is obviously not the 3812. Uh, I pulled out one of the, one of my, uh, auction finds. Or, yeah, one of the uh, items I got at the auction, um, in March. <clears throat> so, what this is, is it's, uh, it's a 40 dash 125 Philco. It's um, a, a broadcast in police band. It's obviously in pretty cruddy shape here. You can see I've already done some cleaning. This took. <laughs> this thing is so gross, it's just not even funny. Uh, this is, took a Scotch Brite pad and a bunch of soapy water I used out of my squirt bottle here just to get down to. Uh, clean wood. Uh, like I said, this is pretty disgusting. This item sat, I'm assuming, somewhere where it was exposed to sun. <clears throat> because you can see the dial plastic here is quite yellow, which I can get some of that. Uh, I also discovered I can get the dial scale is also faded. Uh, you can see how it's brown where the sun wasn't and green in the middle. And I can get these in either brown or green, coincidentally. Uh, our good friends at Radio Days has them. Hopefully I'll, I will like their reproduction, although I believe theirs are plastic. Uh, I hope I like the quality of that better than I liked their imitation phenolic dials. So what I've done with this, before I invest any more money in it, um, it needs a new speaker. The speaker is absolutely rotten. Um, just when I all I you know how we test them by trying to do this, my fingers went right through. So um, I've got an auction coming up this weekend. The uh, president of our club is running an auction for uh, a radio repair shop that was local here. A uh, gentleman closed his doors back in the 90s, and uh, my understanding is he just sort of locked the doors and left it at that. So it's a bit of a time capsule. So there's supposed to be uh, all sorts of parts dating back to the uh, 40s and 50s. So I'm going to see if I can pick a speaker up there. Otherwise, I have to go get. I'm going to have to get this reconed. I haven't even tested this speaker yet, so I don't know if it's any good. The first thing I wanted to do was um, also. Uh, this needs a dial pointer. Uh, the dial pointer was so rotten. Let's see if I can get that out here. It broke. It's first of all, it's orange. It's supposed to be red, and it broke into. It just disintegrated when I uh, barely put any pressure on it to try to pull it off the hub. So before I go, before I go spend five bucks on a pointer. And before I go spend 40 bucks on a speaker, or hopefully a lot less than that, uh, I figured I'd better test the coils and the tubes. So the tubes were easy. I tested those. There is one bad one. It's the, uh, oh, I forgot which one it is. It's sitting over on my desk. So I went ahead and tested the coils. They're, they're good. Um, as you, you can see here, I, the last thing I was testing here is the oscillator coil, and this happens to be the well it's supposed to be a green and blue wire but according to the schematic but it's actually a green and a green wire <clears throat> it's supposed to be 6.5 ohms and it's at 6.8 so it's good uh, the other ones tested out the other side of this coil tested out at 55 ohms and it's supposed to be 50 uh, the uh, let's see which coil is that the first IF trans, uh, coil uh, tested out fine. It was about 22 and a half and 22 and a half. Should be 20. And the second IF, which is, where is it? Wait, that's 14. Yeah, first IF. Um, yeah, so now I've lost my place here. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, the RF transformer and the... Um, this is the RF transformer down here. This tested out good. Uh, the oscillator transformer tested out good. 
Um, <clears throat> obviously, this set has been touched at least once. There's a sprig capacitor up here. And this is a really tight set. I had to take this out just to add, just so I could see the uh, uh, transformer wires there uh, to make sure I could find because I couldn't find the blue one. So uh, so far, you know, this looks like it's pretty much good to go. Um, I can go ahead and look at uh, a speaker. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn that off. The <clears throat> push button assembly. I haven't, I mean, it works. Uh, the uh, grommets are, there's rubber grommets here that steady it and all that fun stuff, and it's the, they're rotten. Uh, the dial lamp, of course, was burned out. So the coils are good. The speaker, I don't know if it's good, but it, if, if worse comes to worse, it needs to be reconed. Uh, I need a new dial pointer, which I can pick up this weekend. The only thing I'm bummed about is uh, this is going to have to come off. In the graphics that are on here, as you can see, they uh, actually are, are fading off and they, they corroded and turned green. I can't find any like this. Uh, all I can find are the ones that are, are kind of rounded and I'd have to improvise. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to save these. I kind of hope so, but I don't know. This one should be a bit easier to do. It's not going to require quite as much um, crap, I guess. <laughs> um, it's not going to require quite as much uh, lacquer. Um, interestingly enough, you can see inside here where the, when they built it, they got even sloppy with it right up in here. So, oh, interestingly, this is the remnants, and I'm, I think I'm going to lacquer over this. Uh, this had a, an asbestos pad in it, and it went up the sides and along the bottom and up the top. And um, basically what I did to it was uh, soaked it with uh, water here, uh, soapy water, let it sit for about five or ten minutes, <clears throat> and then it actually just peeled right off. Uh, folded it up, tied it up in a bag, and we just won't tell anybody what I did with it after that. So I think I'll lacquer it up just to seal what's left of the, on there. I don't want to scrape it up and get it all airborne. Um, and uh, go from there, I'll have to strip the finish off if, if I even need to. I mean, it was coming off the top, coming off on the top here when I... Uh, when I was uh, using the soap and water. So this should clean up pretty good, I think. And um, lucky for me, most of the Philco stickers are still on this one. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I guess, put this up. I don't want it to be my next project. I'd like to know where this screw came from, though. <laughs> I don't remember taking a screw off. Interesting. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just wanted to introduce you guys to this set. This is one of the ones that I picked up at the auction in March. Uh, I have, uh, let's see, what else do I have that I picked up at the auction in March? I have a, an E-Type speaker. I think I told you about that already. Uh, for the Atwater Camp 42 that I picked up at the auction in February. And I have a, um, oh, my fun one is going to be the, I have a Grundig. Uh, 2066, I think it is. I haven't seen a 2066 before. I've looked, don't seem to be able to find much information on it. I can find stuff on the 2077. I did find a schematic on it, <clears throat> so that's a good thing, I guess. Um, I'm going to see what else I can get for this because, uh, this is about the only read legible schematic I could get off Nostalgia Air, so I can email Chuck and see if he's got something. But uh, this will be coming up. It is a, I guess I forgot to tell you, it's a six tube series set. So I guess you could kind of call it an All-American Six. And uh, I believe if John is watching this, he's going to tell you that uh, series sets are for wimps. But uh, this should be a lot easier to work on because I only have a couple of transformers. So famous last words, I realize that. Now that I said that, this radio will be the death of me or I'll never get it to work. So. We'll find out. Anyway, so I'm going to wrap this up. Again, like I said, I just wanted to introduce you to this, and um, looks like it's good to go, good to be restored. So 
talk to you soon. I will start the 3812, I promise.